I've been sailing and drawn towards ocean adventures for over 30 years now. Even my former job career has been focused on sailing the big oceans as a first officer on big advanced ships classed to carry the latest technology within navigation. On my sailboat Tessie, I've been fortunate enough to try the latest and most advanced navigational equipment there is on the market for pleasure crafts on board my 48-year-old Contessa 35. But amongst all the advanced and very helpful equipment, there is one weak link. The factor of human error and our tendency to lose attention and fall asleep. So hello again and uh, welcome back to another episode of uh, more upgrades for my beautiful Tessie for the Greenland trip in uh, some few days now. I'm getting excited and uh, yeah, let's uh, cut straight to the business. You know, when you're out sailing alone like me, you often get tired and uh, you don't pay attention as much as you should, even with all the uh, instruments and navigational uh, equipment uh, there is on board today. But they don't warn you, you know, you need to pay attention to them and, and look, look, at, uh, look at it with your eyes to, to see what's happening around you. They are not telling you what, what is happening. You have to you have to see it for yourself. You know, if you don't pay attention, you eventually will hit land or you will maybe even worse hit another boat and the people will get hurt. And I know that all too well myself as I have struck Tessie on land because of fatigue and uh, sleep. Let us take a little recap on that and check what, what happened. Yes, indeed, I experienced falling asleep while sailing. Ironically enough, with all the navigation equipment switched on. All right, so we are done with the mast, seven days of work. And we are heading back home to Hugesund in uh, pitch black dark with the help of radar, chart plotter, and the really cool CIA thermo camera. So you have a crisp, clear view about what's happening around us. On my way back home from the rigging shop after one hard week of work, Refitting the mast of Tessie, a late and dark November evening, I slowly fell asleep being more fatigued than I ever had expected. This kept Tessie steady on her course towards her devastating fate. Question is, could this accident have been avoided? Let's see what we got. Yes, I fell asleep and I didn't pay attention. It could happen to everyone. You know the quote, uh, there are two kinds of sailors, the one ha that has gone aground and the ones who are going to run aground. But there might be a solution to this now, or even at least a good help to, to avoid collisions and crashing uh, at sea. And I'm really excited to present it uh, to you in this video. So, so let's check it out. Here is the package containing the, the brand new watch it computer system and let's check what's in the box let's first understand what the watch it smart collision prevention system is all about it's simply a processor unit containing the watch it software which pulls data from your existing navigation system like speed and course over ground from your gps wind speed from the wind sensor and depth from the echo sounder it then overlays your boat's data onto watch its own charts, which is pre-downloaded on the processor unit. It uses all of this data to constantly monitor your movements relative to its chart. If you're heading towards shallow water or land, a beep sound will alert to make you aware. If you're not responding and you get closer, a voice will start speaking. Danger! Shallow water ahead! If you're still not responding, a loud alarm will hopefully get your attention to avoid the dangerous situation. Let's connect it all together and then head out for a test. So that looks pretty cool. Tons of connections on it. So this is all the things we need to connect this system to my existing uh, Raymarine system. Okay, so this setup is of course coming with a manual and I've uh, done my job and read through it and I've learned how to set this up now and it is really simple. First off you want to connect the control box to the Raymarine SeaTalk NG system which is uh, this one and for that you need this box and this is to convert the SeaTalk NG or NMEA 2000 signals to USB and we also need to 
have a converter to SeaTac NG. This port to this port. USB on either of the USB plugs. And then again, you need to connect it to uh, Raymarine's network switch. Network switch cable on the far right side, just under the USB here. So the network switch cable connects to my network switch sitting down here. Now we need to connect the speaker to the box. And this goes into here. And the phono plug goes into here. Then it's the Wi-Fi uh, antennas. And they just grew on like this. And of course the power cable, I have already attached it to the board here. So that's all the signal cables connected and the speaker. And now we just need to get the box installed on the wall right down there. So for the speaker, I think uh, a natural place would be like uh, up here maybe. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It should be audible all over the cabin now and pretty much outside, I think. Now let's clean up this mess and uh, get the cover and pillow on and start the system. Let's see what happens. I took a ride to one of my secret favorite anchorages and woke up to a beautiful morning. My plan was to put the system to a special test on my way back home. All right, so I'm at this beautiful location. I uh, took a ride over here to yesterday, a couple of hours from my home base, and uh, to check out the Watchit Smart Collision Prevention System. And I have to say, uh, it's really interesting. On my sale here yesterday, uh, it uh, did what it uh, was intended to do, and it uh, gave me alarms when I got close to shore, and, uh, and it seems to work uh, pretty well. It's really cool. So it's detecting we're close to land now. So the beeps are coming on. So now I am ready to head back to Haugesund and I'm going to provoke the system a little bit. I will uh, pretend like I'm falling asleep and that has happened before, <laughs> we all know that. And it didn't go too well, but I'm going to pretend that I'm not paying attention. I will let the boat go on course straight to land and see what happens. I have set my boat parameters like depth to minimum 3 meters and an alert time for 30 seconds before impact. So I think it's time to Take the anchor up and uh, let's start the test. So we're underway and uh, I'm uh, getting close to some shores now. And the watch it is, is adjusted to react on things that are within 30 seconds around you. So we have 30 seconds to uh, react before something happens. So right now we are going towards those uh, rocks here and let's see what happens. They are not visible on the chart yet, but soon they will. Danger, shallow water ahead. Yeah. Danger, shallow water ahead. Danger, shallow water ahead. Danger, shallow water ahead. Here it pops up. So now Danger, we have 30 seconds to do something. Danger, shallow water ahead. Danger is slightly over. It goes over to uh, to uh, to that sound. Danger, like, underwater obstacle ahead. Danger, so underwater obstacle ahead. So just just here now. It's just down here now. So so it works. It's really cool. Danger, so now we're going close to this uh, navigation Danger, mark here. And Danger, obstacle ahead. It's here and it's to. In the face of numerous obstacles, the system can recognize and alert only about the most relevant obstacle. If you are paying attention to your navigation, all the alarms of course get stressful and can seem unnecessary. The watchet comes to its justice when you are not paying attention, maybe in more open waters. 
especially if you're tired and unfocused after many hours of sailing, and the span of time wanders away. It's time for a little inshore coastal test. So now we will start to navigate in more open water this way, and I will set my bow straight on land, and I will see, pretend like I'm asleep, and uh, we'll see how much time I have until the alarm goes uh, that, that I have to re react. So let's set the course here now. Go to. So now we are on track, straight on land. I continued full speed towards my waypoint, set to this little rock, blending well in with the land behind. Okay, so I'm downstairs, sleeping, pretending, and it's 360 meters to, to here now. Oh, danger, shallow water ahead. So that's the first. So there the rock pops up. So I'm still asleep. Not waking up. 220 meters. 180 meters. Okay, I'm not... Oh, there we are. <laughs> That's crazy. Danger, shallow water ahead. Yeah. Danger, shallow water ahead. Danger, shallow water ahead. <laughs> Danger, shallow water ahead. Danger, shallow water ahead. Danger, shallow water ahead. Danger, shallow So that's how it works. Danger, shallow water ahead. That is actually really cool. Danger, shallow water ahead. That is really cool. Let's keep going. So now the danger is over, and the nice woman keeps quiet. <laughs> so let's head back home and uh, relax a little bit. That was stressful, but it's so cool to see it working in the background like that. That's what it's supposed to do. Just work in the background. Uh, you don't have to do anything with it. Just flick on the power and, uh, and it uh, takes the, all the information it needs from the existing system, from the sensors. So we can focus on, uh, on the navigation on the plotters. Watch it is also constantly zoomed in to its automatically updated chart to pick up every detail you might miss if you're not zoomed in enough on your own navigational charts. This little miss has unfortunately led to bad accidents for many sailors in the past. So I look forward to bringing it on uh, my Greenland trip. So we are back home, safe in port. Let's get her tied up. All right, thank you Watch It for your fantastic technology. I trust it to be my uh, second mate on my challenging uh, trip to Greenland and I will report along the way how it uh, works. So check out Watch It by following the link in the video description and I'm uh, soon ready to depart for Greenland now in a couple of days and I can fade the anxiety, but the boat is fully prepared and I am ready to go now. And a big thanks to all the support on Patreon and uh, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram for news and updates as usual. And you can also now track me on my new app on my way to Greenland. It's called NBJS by Eric Ondro and it's downloadable on both Google Play and App Store for iPhones and Android. And yes, Keep subscribing to my channel to, uh, to see when a new video pops up and I will see you very soon. Bye.